Okay, here we may as well move on then with uh, radicals. Uh, this is actually the first section. If you've looked at the book, then you'll see that it's actually quite extensive, pretty long. And there's a few things that uh, uh, you might find somewhat difficult, uh, which is why I kind of gave you that review uh, section, review video to begin with. If you haven't had a look at that radical review, uh, I would suggest taking a few minutes to glance at it real quick, okay? If you're comfortable with radicals and this all makes sense to you, then you're probably doing all right. So, first of all, let's have a look and see if we can solve some of these radical equations, okay? Now, when we're solving these radical equations, you understand that in order to get rid of a square, you take the square root. So it's the square root of x squared, and it's the square root of 4. And because we're taking the square root, we put a plus or minus in front, which means that the solutions are plus or minus 2, right? Now, if we look at a cubic function, uh, notice that we're going to have to take the cube root of this cubic function. But wait a sec, can we take the cube root of a negative number? And the answer in that case is absolutely yes, you can. Now, this would not have worked, obviously, if it was a negative number. And that's what we're coming up with here. Look, x to the power of 4. Well, I'm going to have to take the fourth root of uh, x to the power of 4 to get x which means I'm going to have to take the fourth root of negative 16 and hope you'll see that that is actually not possible because it's a negative number, right? Uh, let's take a look at the last one here, the fifth root of negative uh, 5. So I'd have to take the fifth root of x to the power of 5, right? That would give me x. And I can indeed take the fifth root of negative 5, uh, and it's just the fifth root of negative 5. Um, you can leave the answer like that option you would have on your graphing calculators. How do you do fifth root? Well, uh, you use this math button here. Now notice down here it's got your index, right? So what you do first is you put a 5 in there, uh, then you pick the math button, you pick that number there which is 5. You've got the fifth root of, let's put negative 5 in there, boom, uh-uh, what the hell happened? Uh, the fifth root of negative 5. Oh, you know what I did? I used this minus. I can't do that. 5, um, 5. I've got to use this minus down here. My apologies. This one here is what you have to use. So negative 5, and I have an answer of negative 1.4 or whatever. Okay? So we can take odd roots of negative numbers, but you can't take even roots of negative numbers. Okay? I'm not even going to make notes on that. It's just something that you should know. Now, graphing radicals is where we're going with this stuff, okay? Can you graph all these different functions? Now, what I've got for you right here, first of all, is your original graph, right? The square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, is 3, right? Now, where do all these others lie? Now, we know that we can't take the square root of a negative number. So in order for this to actually work, the x's have to be negative. So this is a reflection. If you also remember transformations, we made the x negative. So it's a reflection over the y-axis, right? So it means it's exactly the same. Square root of 1, 1. Square root of 2, 4. Square root of 9, 3. And what you have is this thing right here. Okay, and this is y is equal to the square root of negative x. Notice that we're looking at the domain and the range as well, okay? On this side over here, your domain and range are both positive. You look back here, your domain, x has to be less than or equal to 0. Your range, your y, still is greater than or equal to 0. Now, if you have a negative in the front, like this one, what that means, it's a reflection over the x-axis, right? Because all your y's become negative. So now it goes down this way. What you might notice is that we're looking at kind of the bottom half of a parabola, right? So this here is y is equal to negative root x, and these two here make up the inverse of your quadratic function, right? Now, your domain and range here, right? Domain x is less than or equal to 0. Your y is greater than or equal to 0. And when you put these two negatives together, that's a flip-flip or a flip-flip. So what you end up with is a double flip over both axes, and you end up on the bottom here, where this is a combination of both reflections, okay? Uh, where your domain is uh, less than zero and your range is less than or equal to zero as well. So these are the four things that you should think about. Uh, understand how we get into each of these quadrants, okay? Because that's going to help us when we start looking at transformations. Now, with transformations, I'll leave this up here for a sec, or you can pause it and sketch it up if you like. Uh, but I'm going to take it away now. Now we're going to look at transformations. Okay, 
transformation. So what do these four letters mean? Can you remember what they mean? They work exactly the same way as they did before, right? So this is your vertical stretch, okay? If A is greater than one, it's a vertical stretch or an expansion. If A is less than one, it's a vertical compression. The B on the inside, notice that you have to isolate it or factor it out so you just have a one X on the inside, right? So the B is our horizontal stretch because that affects the X axis, okay? And remember the opposite, if B is two, it's a compression of a half. If B is a half, it's an expansion of two. The H is a horizontal slide or what they call a translation, okay? A translation or a slide. Now you remember that if it's uh, X plus two, then it's go left two, right? X minus two, it goes right two. And the K at the end is what they call a vertical translation. That's the easiest of all, translation or a slide. That just means that if it's plus two on the outside, it goes up two, and if it's down two, it goes down two, right? So uh, what we're gonna wanna look at are a couple graphs here. Let's have a look, where are my graphs? Let's use this one right here. We'll flip it over. And how about I look at a function uh, like this? How about I look at y is equal to two bracket or uh, radical two x minus four, and then on the end, minus one. So what I should do here maybe is, uh, is put it Give me a sec here, folks. I'm sorry. So we'll look at y is equal to 2. And we'll go 2x minus 4 minus 1. So what do we have to do? We have to rearrange this to, right? And then we go 2 bracket. This is x minus 2, uh, all minus 1. Well, I guess before we graph this, we might want to think about what's happening. Well, you know what? I think we can do this. That's not going to be a problem. Let's have a look at it. Uh, so it's still in the positive quadrant. Let's have a look here. It's still in the positive quadrant, so I can do this right here. Here we go. So first of all, this is where we were, right? One and one. Uh, let's go four and two. Notice that I've made these a little bit bigger. Uh, and then nine, square root of nine is three. So this is my original function. Okay, wait, boom, boom. And boom. Yeah, that's my original function. So what's happened here is I have a vertical expansion of two. I have a horizontal compression of one half. And then it goes right two and down one. So a vertical expansion of two, which means, boom, that jumps up to here. That jumps up to here. And that jumps up to six. So one, two, all the way up to here. So that's a vertical expansion of two. Now horizontal compression of a half, which means I'm gonna move these into here now. So half, uh, two, half, and then uh, what's gonna be half here? That's gonna be four and a half here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So two, four, six, eight. You're gonna be in the middle there. So now you have this. And then finally, you got to go right two and down one. So right two, right two and down one. Here we are. So right two and down one. And then right two and down one. And then right two and down one. And what we end up with as a final solution here, right two and down, oh, sorry, that was here, not there. And then boom, there we go, an expansion. Now what you have, see how that looks the same as this one up here? That's after the translation. Remember, slides last, another big thing. Slides last, okay? Now, these are not necessarily that easy to do. And if you'd like to uh, practice some of your sketches or, or your expansions, these vertical stretches and horizontal stretches, they are more difficult ones. I'd suggest using your applications on your phones or your graphing calculators just to check out what happens here, okay? Now, remember that they work exactly the same way. So there's not really anything too crazy 
going on. It's just a matter of being able to visualize what it is that we're doing. Okay, so let's have another look at, uh, let's look at another one. Uh, just quickly to give you a heads up, see if you can sort this one out. Y is equal to 2, square root of 4 minus X, and then plus 1. What would you do to that before you started sliding it, right? So, or before you started moving it. Realize that we have to change this thing. So y is equal to 2, and then this is our function. It's going to be negative x minus 4. I think you guys are probably comfortable with that. We've seen it enough. And now what's happening, right? We have a vertical expansion of 2. This negative on the x, on the inside, so it's a reflection over the x is going, so it's a reflection over your y, and then it goes right four and it goes up one so this is what we're looking at when we're going to graph this function okay let's give it a shot why don't you guys try it i'm going to draw an axis here i always think it's a good idea let's do normal scale uh, I always think it's a good idea to put your original function in there just to give you an idea, right? This is y equals x, and then we're going to do this to it. All right, so vertical expansion of 2. Boom, 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 right? There it is. That's this part. Reflection over the y, so that's not too bad. That's 4 over, so it's 4 this side. That's 9 over, so it's 9 this side. And then you have that reflection over there, right? And then right four and up one. So one, two, three, four, up one. 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 And you have your function. It looks like this, but it's just slid over. That is a basic transformations of your radical functions. Now notice that these are all just square roots, okay? These are all just square roots. What happens is that we're gonna get into cube roots and higher indexes. Indexes, I don't think that's the right word. I think it should be indices, higher indices. I don't know, whatever, just a higher index, okay? Now, hopefully you can remember that higher order indexes um, give rise to different domains and ranges. Okay, so uh, the difference between an odd and an even function, right? So let's have a look at a couple of these. So if I was going to graph, say, um, y equals x cubed. Okay, well, here's a couple points here. Yeah, so let's recall one-to-one -one functions, okay? So quickly, if I was going to graph it, boom, that's a quadratic, right? It's not a one-to-one -one function. So when you inverse it, when you do the square root, which is the opposite of squaring, you end up with something like this, which is why we were restricting the domain. Now, if you look at a cubic function, boom, like that, once you reflect it, it looks like this. Or wait a sec, I got the... the, the No, that's right. And, um, so that's still a, a function. And so we can have negative values in there. So uh, same with the fifth and same with the seventh and same with the ninth root. Okay. It, negatives exist in those, but all the even roots, they don't. So let's just have a look at a couple of different ones here. Let's look at y equals x squared. So we'll go uh, boom and then four boom and then nine boom. This is y equals x squared. Okay, now what would y equals x to the power of 3 look like? Well, it's still going to be 1, 1, right? And notice that we're choosing values that we can do. So the square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3. Those are values that I know. So now this cube root of 1 is 1. What's the next one? The cube root of 8 is 2. So what we have on this side, we've got a function that looks something like this. And and then the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1, and negative 8 is negative 2. So we have a function that looks like that. Sorry about the sketchiness of it, right? And then if you look at a fourth root, okay, so square root, cube root, no big deal. It's still doable. It exists in both sides the cube root, right? And this is y equals x cubed. Now, if we look at the fourth root, the fourth root, well, I know that the square root of 1 is 1, 
So the, uh, the fourth root of 1 is 1. Notice that I've expanded the, uh, the x-axis here to accommodate, right? Because the, uh, the next x that I can choose uh, would be 8 because... No, actually, uh, sorry, we're doing fourth root. So the fourth root of 16 is actually 2. So what we have now... Oh, this isn't the best graph. My apologies. I'm going to get some better graph paper here and see if I can sort that out uh, a little bit better. Anyways, let me just do this. So 1, 1, right? And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 2. So what you're going to get is a very steep one. 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 2, uh, 5. So you can see that the y equals x squared would be a little bit higher than the y equals x to the power of 4. Okay? And then similarly, the x to the power of 5 is just going to be much steeper this way, but it's also going to go this way as well. And then x to the power of 6 is going to be even steep, uh, sorry, not steeper, but shallower. And we just keep going along that way. Uh, the end of this, I know it's a little bit confusing. We'll spend a little bit more time in class working on these higher indices, if you like. Hopefully that uh, allowed you a good start uh, for uh, radicals and graphing radicals. And like I said, we'll work on this stuff in class.